What's up guys, Sonny the Badger here, coming to you with another episode of the Badger's Den. In today's episode, I am going to be changing the oil on the silver bike, because as you guys have probably heard, uh, Mama Badger and myself are getting ready to hop on the bikes at the end of this month and head to Texas for a week. We have uh, a couple of business meetings out there and I thought, you know what, why not take a ride? So we're going to take a week and uh, ride to Texas and back, so it should be a great time. But anyway, that bike is due for an oil change and uh, I want to get her all changed up so I figure what the heck I will do a video on how to change your oil so that everybody that doesn't change their own oil can now change it if they want to first thing you got to do though is you want your bike to be warmed up um, the oil all warmed up the bike all warmed up a lot of people just start the bike up and let it run in the garage I on the other hand do not because why miss the opportunity to take a ride so anyway, I'm going to take a quick ride, get the bike all warmed up, and then uh, we'll change the oil. So I will be right back. Alright guys, so we just got back from riding the bike, got it all warmed up and ready to do the oil change. But the first thing I do is I always take and lay everything out for the job beforehand so that I know I am ready to go. As you can see, I've got everything all laid out in my little roll cart here. I have the 5.8 socket, which is what uh, fits the oil drain plug. I have my oil, which um, I will explain this bottle here in a little bit. And then uh, I have my K&N filter. I always run a K&N filter. Uh, one of the nice features of the K&N filter is the little 17 millimeter nut on the back of it so if you need uh, to take it off you can just take a, a 17 millimeter socket and a ratchet and pull it right off so i've got everything laid out and i'm ready to change the oil so let's get started all right guys so on the right hand side of the bike is uh, where the drain plug is located also of course uh, where your oil pan and uh, your dipstick is located and so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to pull the dipstick out um, and uh, put it over here And then right below where the dipstick is, if you'll go straight down, and this might be a little tough to see, but your oil drain plug is right here. So we're gonna take our 5.8 socket, put it right on the oil drain plug, and loosen that bad boy up. Of course, you don't wanna pull it all the way out until you get your oil pan under it. So we're going to move our oil pan under it and uh, drain that oil. Alright guys, we got the oil pan under it and uh, we're unscrewing the oil drain plug by finger. So it's loose and completely out of there. Then we're gonna pull the drain plug up and clean it all off. All right guys, so we got the drain plug up here where we can see it. First thing we're gonna do is kind of wipe it all clean here. Check for any kind of metal, anything on the magnet. So there's a magnet on the very end there. That'll collect any kind of metal shavings or anything. I am happy to report there is nothing on there um, at all. So that's great. And then you'll also notice that there's an O-ring around the bottom of this and uh, we'll go into replacing it here in just a little bit. All right guys, so while the oil is draining um, on the right hand side of the bike, we're gonna go to the left hand side of the bike, which is where the oil filter is located. So the oil filter is located on the, right hand, on the left hand side of the bike, um, up at the very front of the motor. Down below the gas tank, all the way down here you will see the chrome oil filter right there. That is where the oil filter is located and we're going to replace that now. Okay guys, as you heard me say earlier, um, I generally use the K&N oil filter and on the back of it is a 17 millimeter nut that allows me to take off the filter. But I had uh, some new tires put on the bike, which I don't do myself. And while I was in my local shop, I had them change my oil last time. And so they have put a regular oil filter on there that does not have that nut. So they do make specialty tools for it. Um, you know, they have uh, this cap that goes right over the end of it. Uh, but you can also just use just a plain old filter wrench. 
Um, and uh, I'm going to use the filter wrench today to show you how to use it uh, because most everybody has one of these in their garage um, and you don't really need a specialty tool. So let's get that thing off. All right, guys, as you can see, here's the filter. Um, it does not have the nut on there, so I need to take this off. So I'm going to do that with just a regular filter strap. Let's see how good I am at doing this with just one hand. So you just slide the filter strap over it, and then you just turn it. It's all loosened up. I can do the rest by hand. Pull the filter strap off, and then uh, start turning the oil filter. It will start to drain. Uh, as you can see, I have a little drain pan below it. There's not a whole lot of oil that comes out of it, so I literally just use the lid off of one of my oil pans um, to collect the oil there. And then, of course, I will take some brake clean and clean that all up when I'm done. All right, guys, so what I'll do is I will just wait for it to drain. You can see the oil draining out of it now. I'll just wait for that to drain. Once it's done draining, I will go ahead and take it the rest of the way off and then of course replace it with uh, my new filter. All right guys, it is pretty well drained. So let's go ahead and pull that old filter off there. Yes, I'm using a paper towel because um, that's not as hot. Pull it off there, tip it up, and then I just put it over a bucket and let it drain. And there it is. It is off. So one of the things you want to do is make sure that you wipe this area off here um, and make sure that there's a rubber ring right here. Make sure that that rubber ring does not get stuck on there and you put the other filter on top of it because you will have one really massive oil leak really fast and you do not want to clean that up. All right, so once you've got the old filter off, you can clean this area all up here. I personally, um, I'll show you what I use. I'm, I'm a big brake clean fan. Uh, I think it comes from uh, my times as an automotive mechanic, but I just spray this area all with brake clean um, and it does a wonderful job. And then just a matter of keeping the oil cleaned up there. So um, just take a paper towel and put it there until you're ready to put your filter back on. All right guys, so it's time to put the filter on. So the K&N filter that I usually put on, uh, it comes uh, with a protective wrap on it. And also, they have already lubed the O-ring around here, which is something that you want to do with your bike. Now, there are two schools of thought from here. Some people like to pour oil into um, the oil filter, uh, fill it up maybe halfway full, and then put it on. And then uh, some people just put the oil filter on. Personally, I always just put the oil filter on, uh, but you know, that's a personal preference. So uh, if you feel like uh, pouring this half full of oil, absolutely uh, do it and uh, you know do what you feel is best for your bike uh, all I'm giving you is instructions on how to get the oil how to get to that point you make your decision from there all right guys so let's take and uh, screw this back on and then we'll go over and put the drain plug in and we will fill this bad boy up all right guys I'm gonna remove that paper towel and uh, get this installed And then guys, on the filter, um, you only need to go hand tight. Uh, some people will do it hand tight and then a half a turn. Uh, another thing that is your choice, look at your owner's manual, do what it tells you to do or do what you, you, know, you feel is best. So me personally, uh, I just tighten it as tight as I can get it by hand and uh, call it good to go. All right guys, so we got the oil filter changed and now it's time to install our drain plug we kind of went over the drain plug earlier and so uh, what I do is I inspect the o-ring and if I don't see any kind of damage to it I will reuse it 
Um, everybody else says to replace it, and it's a cheap replacement, honestly, but uh, I've just found that, look, if there's no damage, I just put it back in there, tighten it up, and it has always worked well for me. So, uh, yet again, it's your decision. So, um, you do what you choose to do. If you want to, just go ahead and peel this O-ring off, put you a new O-ring on there, and you're rocking. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to stand the bike up to get all of the oil off there, out of there. I've already done that. So once you stood the bike up and then put the bike back on the kickstand, you can go ahead and put the drain plug back in place. Alright guys, so each bike has specific torque specifications for the drain plug. Personally, um, I just run it by feel, but uh, you'll want to get your manual or look it up online and get your torque specs and make sure that you tighten your oil drain plug down to those torque specs. Alright guys, so it's time to fill the bike up with oil. Very important, do not forget to do that. Um, so once you've got the drain plug in, um, you've got the oil filter on, make sure you've done both of those. Double check yourself. The last thing you want to do is fill it up with oil starter with either one of those missing. So make sure that you have done that. Then you're ready to fill it up with oil. So uh, you guys probably saw this bottle earlier in my video. So I personally run this Lucas oil stabilizer in my bike um, in replace of one quart of oil. And the reason I do is I live in Florida and man, it's freaking hot. So I run 2050 Lucas synthetic. Um, but this is just a heavier oil um, and uh, more protective. Uh, I change my oil every 5,000 miles, which in my case is about every month and a half, two months. So I change my oil pretty frequently, uh, but I always run a quart of this. And honestly, uh, everybody's going to have their own opinion on this. It has always served me very well. So of course, I'm going to continue to do it. Yet again, your bike, your choice. So you decide what you want to do. Most of uh, these bikes take about two and a half quarts of oil, but you'll want to reference your owner's manual or of course um, your service manual. Uh, I generally start with about two quarts, um, take it for a ride, come back, check it, and then top it off. All right guys, so of course we're gonna fill it right where your oil dipstick goes. So um, I just grab a quart and dump it in there. Quart there, take it, turn it up. There you go. No funnel needed, unless you're just messy. If you're super messy, then definitely get a funnel. You don't want oil all over your chrome. All right, guys, so I have filled it up with a couple of quarts of oil. So what you wanna do is you wanna start it um, and then check it, uh, just to make sure that you get the oil filter full. Um, and then you wanna take it and actually ride it. Uh, Yet again, another chance for a ride. Take it, ride it, then when you come back from the ride and it's all nice, warm, hot, um, check your oil and make sure that your level is all good. And uh, you have just completed your oil change. So something else I wanted to mention was, um, all in all, from the uh, oil filter and the oil, uh, the Lucas, and everything. I've got about $45 in this oil change. Uh, I know that to do a synthetic oil change at uh, dealerships and most local shops, it's around 100 bucks. So you can literally save yourself about 50 bucks for about maybe 15 minutes of work. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, I will put a link in this video to all of the stuff that I use, the oil, the oil filter, um, the Lucas, so that uh, you guys can just click on it and buy it if that's what you want to use for your bike. Thanks so much for watching, guys. So, um, if you went out and got uh, some Lucas uh, and you decided to use that in your bike, save this lid. Uh, in, a, in a different video, I'm going to show you a hack with this lid that'll save you an absolute um, 
ton of time, a ton of mess, and you won't have to buy any special tools. So definitely keep an eye out for what I do with this lid in a future video. Also guys, if you liked our video, um, if you found it useful, uh, hopefully we saved you some money as you're changing your own oil. Please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and share it with your friends. Remember guys, it's not about the destination, it's all about the ride. We'll see you soon.